This video is part of a series on the seven basic forms, and this one is the ribbon form. This is one that Will Weston added to the list of basic forms, and you should check out what he is doing with it. It's really great. It's something that you would come across naturally if you're just drawing all the time and drawing in dimensions, but it's great to codify it and think about it as a particular form all, of, all in its own. The way that you do this is you're going to make, begin with an S curve or an arc, and then you'll kind of run a parallel S curve near it and then kind of connect the dots. It's um, not incredibly difficult to do. It's just something that you need to become aware of and play with all the variations that you can come up with. So what you want to do is create ones that look like S curves that are coming out in perspective. And the way you do that is you draw a big S curve and then you draw a paralleling S curve that gets just a bit further away as you come closer and closer and closer. Or if you want to think about it the other way, if you start from the front, get make that distance narrower and narrower and narrower. The trick to doing this and uh, being effective with it is to draw a little less than you normally would. You don't have to draw all the way through it um, as if you're doing a full wireframe. You might want to do that at the beginning to kind of get the feel for it. But if you kind of understand where the ribbon is going, you can um, allow the planes to overlap without, without drawing through. Or if you're using a two-tone thing like I am, you can just allow the overlap to happen um, in your initial layer and then on your finishing layer you can just um, you can avoid drawing through and I've come up with a bunch of variations for this and you should try uh, a bunch of these but don't limit yourself to these sort of things do things that are like um, different than what you see and and see if you can find ribbons out in compositions and out in the world and see if you can use that as a tool um, to draw a bunch of uh, difficult subjects. This one is basically a ribbon that's a dramatic incline. And um, so it's as if you're going up a ramp and then going back. Ribbons are pretty useful as far as drawing like pathways or roads go, especially on things that, that curve. The other thing you want to be able to do is twist the ribbon. So if you need a reference for this, you can literally take a piece of decorating ribbon and create some little mini still lives for you to be able to understand the form. Or you can play with it um, abstractly and inventively like I'm doing. The most important thing is that at the end of the day, what you have on the paper feels like a ribbon twisting, turning, and existing in space. And you want to play with a bunch of different levels of twist. So I've done a quarter twist. This one's a half twist, as if you've taken the ribbon turned it halfway against itself and you have what's left. Um, there's other types of twists to do. The trick is to be sure that you're keeping your S curves um, elegant and that the back of the form uh, maintains a sense of integrity, right? When you're overlapping, you want to make sure that you go through and, uh, and that overlap actually kind of makes sense. You don't want to make the ribbon invisible or make the ribbon too thick because um, there are these points where the ribbon almost like seems to disappear and there's an intersection. Um, I kind of de-emphasize those a little bit and make them a little bit wider than they should because it makes a little more sense that way. Um, but, you know, if you're having trouble, you can always get ribbon out and do some close observation and practice the form that way. I think... Direct observation is always a good way to go about learning this sort of stuff if you're having trouble making it up in your head. Um, here, I'm making it up in my head because you know, I've done this a lot um, and done a bunch of different work with forms. Ribbons in and of themselves are kind of new to me, but um, they're pretty useful. And you want to be able to draw them in a bunch of different angles, a bunch of different scenarios, and work on your versatility once you understand the basic form. So this is basically an arc rather than an S-curve. And 
what the arc is doing is kind of going back and away and then down. This way, the arc is kind of creating a C shape as if you're looking down on a, on a shirt collar or something like that. There's tons of different applications for ribbons, and um, you'll be using a bunch of them whether you want to or not. You'll drift into the ribbon form as you create things like fabric, uh, landscape, pathways, uh, all kinds of things, objects, vehicles, whatever. You're going you're gonna to wind up using this form. It's incredibly useful, and you pretty much have to master it. One of the things that you can also practice is using line weight to emphasize different parts of the arcs. And that can help bring certain parts forward and send certain parts back. This one's, uh, you know, the beginning set of, of a more challenging ribbon form. This is the sort of multi S curve, one that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over and over again. And you can just make a random S curve quite quickly and then follow it along and develop it. And here at the end, I'm going to wind up adding a little half twist to it just to kind of throw things off a little bit, make it a little different. Then once you've established this initial S curve, you can, you can do a little bit with line weight. And when you're ready to go back in space, what you're going to do is pick an angle to go backwards and then use that same angle at every time the S curve bends. So you're going off the S curve at a tangent point and creating those angles going back in space. And you're going to use pretty much the same angle the entire way through. And um, when you go to these intersection points, what you're doing when you hit an overlapping spot is you're going to aim that line towards the where the angle meets the back part of the S curve. And that way it's going to make a lot more sense. There's a couple of mistakes you can make with ribbons in terms of where they intersect because it can either add too much depth or it can kill the depth. And um, if you aim towards that intersection of where the straight line hits the back, then you're not going to encounter any of those problems. And here is the point where I'm adding like a little bit of an S curve and, uh, and a little quarter twist so that the ribbon just kind of trails off and does something that it hasn't done throughout the rest of the ribbon, just to make it a little less boring, a little more interesting. Uh, the other thing you can do is kind of make little coils or spirals with the ribbon. Once you figure out the full twist, you can just continue that twist on and on and on and do many, many twists um, as if you're braiding or doing rope or something like that. Whenever you set these ribbons up, the way to create extra depth is to be sure that there's overlap. So anytime you can get the ribbon, the ribbon to overlap itself, that's going to increase the amount of depth that you can, that you can create. Um, and then any little tip trick and tool that you can use to create, to emphasize depth and create more depth is definitely warranted. Emphasizing particular curves and arcs with heavier line weight or darker line is always good. You want to be sure that you're creating a bunch of line variety. You can also go through and potentially use um, sh elements of shadow core um, to create lighting. This one's pretty important, I think. I'm, I'm just calling this one the book. Um, and basically it's where the ribbon sort of folds and as if it's like, as if you're looking at a, at a large book or something like that. And this is going to teach you how to do like indentations and seams and things like that. Um, when you make them small, it just becomes a few lines, but when they're, they're large, I think you understand the form a little bit better. And what you have to do to make the book make sense is to, um, emphasize a few areas to make it curve. And then you have to do a little bit of, um, of the turning edge and shadow chord tones to make it so that you understand where the form is turning. And what I do is I put a little bit of tone um, around both edges that are kind of going back in space. And then without necessarily lighting it, I kind of stop there. And that helps me just understand where the form is coming out. If you want to challenge, you can do uh, knots uh, as if they're done with a ribbon. So this is a basic overhand knot. Um, the regular, most people just call it a regular knot or a knot. 
And the trick to it is to turn the ribbon so that it's always kind of like facing flat towards you as, every time the knot turns around. And, you know, you may need references, references for this if you want, but I just made this up because um, I kind of knew what an overhand knot might look like. You can do, um, if you can do an overhand knot and multi S curves, the book spirals, you can probably, you won't have any trouble with any of the other ribbon types. And there's not much that's going to throw you off with using ribbons. If you can get this to look pretty convincing, um, cause it is pretty challenging having the overlap happen multiple times and then using quarter, quarter twists to make everything work. So. If you're having trouble with this variation, go back and work on your quarter twists and arcs and stuff like that and make sure that you have those nailed down so that you can um, begin to do things that are more complicated such as this. I think it's really important to do both simple and complicated versions of this for practice so that you can um, be sure that you're going to uh, nail this when you have a, a difficult situation to draw. And one of the things that I've done to bump up this is where there's intersecting lines, I've increased the line weight over the closest point. 